My name is Romeo. My name is Jesse. My name is Lana. My name is Skittles. I'm Sky Raven. I'm a person living with a disability. 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 So my name is Rainbow Hunt. Um, I am the project executive director for Rainbow's Pride in Scarborough, RPIS. Can you tell me a little bit about Rainbow Pride? What work did they do? How did, did you all start? Sure. Um, so Rainbow Pride in Scarborough, we uh, started back in 2010, um, which we, um, myself and my core team member, um, Dre also, who is my coordinator, sorry, my project executive uh, assistant, recognized the need for having more services and spaces in Scarborough, um, specifically for QT, BIPOC, um, multicultural youth, ages 15 to 29 with disabilities and mental health. Um, so we wanted to create something to um, bring the youth together in a space where they could feel safe and be themselves and to also meet others and to collab on different activities and, a, um, and programming and um, services and resources that they need access to, especially in Scarborough, um, Scarborough specifically in Scarborough. Um, so we created this project um, from scratch um, and started different events um, and different uh, programs without funding, but then we were able to get funding. And then we kept on growing and growing with different partnerships and um, collaborations and uh, trusty support and um, so we kept on growing for the, for the past couple of years, up until 2017, and we kept on growing um, with this project. And it's it's been a great turnout with the youth that we work with, especially in Scarborough. They're very artistic um, and very um, outspoken and loves to do art programs and stuff to express ourselves through different mediums. And, and uh, so it's been a really great learning experience. So the youth is always leading the project with the staff support. So we're not holding their hands, they're leading the project, which that's something that we really admire, um, especially with this project, Rainbow Pride Scarborough. What are some of the, the challenges you think that service providers don't get or that we need as a service provider to understand when working with people with disabilities, whether it be physical and or mental disabilities? Um, they really need to make sure that they have um, sit down with the individual privately to welcome them into the space and making sure that they're, you know, that they express themselves openly and not feel like they're scared and feel scared and uncomfortable in a space along with like an art drop in. Um, from some of the youth experiences, what they come to me and they tell me what, what they face in other programs is that they feel like they're left in the corner of the room with other youth in the drop in space is more openly and they feel like they, they're not really connected in a way of like, you know, that supports an ego. Mm -hmm. So I think service providers need to understand that. Um, when you open your door for every, for the youth that you serve, um, you're gonna, you'll be surprised of different people are coming in from different race and gender and sex and abilities and, and learning experiences. And everyone needs to be supported in different ways and should not feel scared to ask for supports or set goals and et cetera. How do, I mean, it must be challenging for service providers to be aware of all of these things. I mean, I think we've done a fairly good job at assessing and seeing how safe our space is safe for people who have come with different gender identities, mm -hmm. different sexualities. But when it comes to disability, we still struggle with that a bit because we don't understand it. And how do we begin that, create that awareness with our service providers so that they understand what these are? Because we don't know, because a lot of disabilities don't just present themselves right away. So it's hard to tell and it's hard to determine. How do we work with our service providers to, to get that? What I do with my project when I bring youth into my project is they fill out, they fill out like a very artistic, artistic survey that they can write down, this is my disability, I need help with this, and this is the medication, I need reminders because I need support, and we keep everything confidentiality. It's not like we're collecting everybody's like, you know, business, but it's a way that you feel comfortable sharing so then we know you have this type of disability, I'm gonna, then we talk about it as a group and the youth are happy talking about their own disability if they're comfortable. Um, and then also training is very important so the youth actually enjoy going out and teaching about disabilities and disabled 
and then some youth share their own experiences of being in a wheelchair about that they're born with this and they're more empowered by being trans and being queer and loving yourselves and teaching so it's, it's a really good tools that we use and stuff you talk about empowerment a lot and yeah. this is be a key to, to everything we've done and <laughs> for the, the documentary we were very much empowered and inspired by the stories we heard coming from the groups that we interviewed them earlier um, how do we get them to be empowered enough to advocate for themselves to to stakeholders who are not necessarily service providers it can be a potential employer a potential school that i want to go to how do we give them that kind of ammunition um to be able to advocate for themselves in those kind of social situations um i i would i would uh, probably say that we would um as a project um, we would we would sit down. Um, I for me personally, I love sitting down with each youth individually over coffee. It's it's always a, it's always a comfort for them, um, and talk about what can we offer and give them as a tool and as a and as a shield or as a as a I like to be artistically so <laughs> as like a artistic tool and shield that they can use towards. Um, like when they go to when they go to school, or like when they look for jobs, or their employer, and some of that, and they can use it to, against them. And knowing that there's there's rights out there. How can folks support Rainbow Pride in Scarborough? In so many ways, um, we we accept we accept any kind of I don't know donations for food gift cards or um, even like money donation that will help our project. Hi, um, can you tell us your name and the disability that you're living with or have been diagnosed with? Mm -hmm. My name is Sky Raven and I've been diagnosed with absent seizures, which means I totally blank out in my brain, but I'm still like physically looking normal. So is it caused by uh, anything? Is it stress related? What, what, what triggers a, a seizure? Um, from what I was told and all like the tests I had to do when I was a kid, it's not really um, uh, triggered by anything, um, which kind of sucks because then I would just eliminate that thing. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, they sort of just happen randomly. Um, they can be heightened when I am in, in like stressful situations and like they sometimes last longer, but they don't always happen, so it's not like anything I can track. How does it show up like when you're working, for instance? Mm -hmm. um, so like. If it's a day where I blank out and maybe someone's giving me instructions or they're just talking to me and I'll be like, hey, can you please repeat yourself? And they'll be like, you're kind of rude. Why didn't you listen to me or why aren't you paying attention and all that stuff? Um, and instead of like meeting with me on the playing field of, oh, tell me more. Can I help you in a way? Mm -hmm. It's you're not listening to me or I think you're being very disrespectful and I think you chose not to listen or in take information and, and things like that. Wow, you get that from managers, managers colleagues, colleagues, everyone. Until I tell them the whole situation and I have to explain myself over and over again and they're like, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so you have to keep advocating for yourself almost. Yes. And how, how does that make you feel about working on a whole? Um, it has me having to sort of um, suss out like new environments a bit longer and more, um, you know, for various things like even like stepping into a new space is like a racialized person as well as a whole situation on itself. But then also looking to see if it's a space in which I'm going to have to keep advocating for something that people don't really believe is true because it's not something they can see or visualize. Um, is on top of that whole other thing, um, so so yeah, it's just it, it's it's really stressful because it takes longer to get comfortable in new spaces. Right, I want to talk about the racialized thing in a bit, but I want yeah. to come back to the to the condition itself. Yeah, what would be helpful in a situation like that mm -hmm. for you to be able to better cope and manage in a work environment? Mm -hmm. What could someone do or see that would make it a lot better? Um. I would think just like eliminating the question period, like the questioning of me, of me being like, is that a real thing? Um, are you telling the truth? And eliminating those questions because I wouldn't bring it up if it wasn't true. My name is Jesse. I am a trans male and my pronouns are he, him. And I live in Toronto, Ontario. 
What's the disability that you live with? I have, uh, I have cerebral palsy and I have a mild intellectual disability. Is this something that you were born with? Or? Yes, I was born with CP. Did you ever get um, treated differently in a bad way going to school or in your community? Did people look down at you or treat you differently in a negative way? Honestly, I wasn't born in Canada. I was born in the Philippines. Okay. So there is so different. Um, I used to get bullied a lot growing up. I came to Canada when I was eight. So, um, so yeah, it was different from from the Philippines and from Canada because every day, like, like I would hear kids whisper, and and I felt very, I felt very al alone, and I felt very different, and I felt very. I felt like I wasn't even human. I felt that I was some, I was not even a living person. That, that's how alone I felt. But in Canada, it um, really helped me change my perspective on things that like, it's okay to have a disability. It's not a burden. It's not, we can't control what happens in our life. Yeah. Do you think as a community that we can do better um, working with a person with a disability? Like, um, like, like understanding what you have to go through, supporting you better. Do you think we can do a better job of doing that? It's just, uh, I know it, it's a process, but just making more places accessible, especially downtown. Um, if I were to do a takeaway, is that you should walk with teaching people, with treating people with respect and know that if they're taking the time to tell you what they're dealing with or what's wrong with them, that they're being super strong in the moment and it takes a lot out of them. Know that they've probably had to do it a lot and they're probably tired with doing it. So just sit back and know that for that one moment, they are the main character in your story. I would say, um... Just be who you are. I know it's easier said than done, but life is trials and errors. We're gonna have struggles in life, but if we have the right people beside us and we have the right support, we can get through of anything. We can, we can accomplish anything what we put our mind into because life is an adventure and life is a mystery. And, and you know, when we doubt ourselves, oh, am I gonna do good? Oh, am I gonna be this, that? You know, you won't know the outcome until the end. So, and you know, life is short. We just have, you know, sometimes we have to risk it and just, you know, we don't, won't know the answer until the end. So that's kind of like the fun part too. To experience life, we kind of have to go outside of our comfort zone and just try things and just having, if you have that right support and all of that, you'll be fine.